This is Pre-Calculus 12, Chapter 7.2. This time we're going to be looking at solving trigonometric equations algebraically. And the best way to do this is to think of the trig function as a variable, then solve as a polynomial equation, then substitute the trig function back in for your final solve. Here's an example. Solve 2 cos squared x equals 1 in degrees. We simplify first. We have cos squared x equals 1 half. For this particular example, we don't have to substitute a variable because it's straightforward. We just do the square root of both sides. Cos x equals plus or minus square root of 1 half. We notice that this is a special ratio. The other way to see this is plus or minus 1 over the square root of 2. Now we take the inverse cosine of both sides, and we get x equals inverse cos of plus or minus 1 over root 2. And the way this looks is 45, 45, 45, 45. Since these are all 45s and these are offset by 90 degrees for each one, and we have plus or minus cos, so we cover every single quadrant. Okay, so our answer is 45 degrees plus 90 degrees times n, where n is the set of all integers. Let's look at the next example where we have to do a replacement. So we'll say y is equal to sine x, because that's what we see. So we have 8y squared minus 6y plus 1 equals 0. And we factor this. This is 4y minus 1 and 2y minus 1 equals 0. So we have y equals 1 quarter and 1 half. And the note here is make equation look simpler with substitution. And now we can substitute back. So we'll need to do this twice. Sine x equals one quarter. Sine x equals one half. So x1 equals inverse sine of one quarter. And that's approximately 0.2526. And x2 equals pi over 6. And let's look at a graph, a quick graph. We see that these two values are positive. All students take calculus. Our answer is in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. So here's x1. Here's x2, here's x3, here's x4, because we need answers in quadrant 2. We need to note that the difference between angles are not the same. So four solutions. Okay, so these are already in quadrant 1. We just need to calculate the angles in quadrant 2. x4 equals pi minus x1. So that's 
0.2526. And here it's okay to use decimal values because we have a decimal value here and pi 2.8889. And x3 is equal to pi minus x2. And that's 5 pi over 6. Since we're not given an interval, we need to give a general solution. So we have 0.2526 plus 2 pi n. Recall that our b is 1. We have no constant here, so it's implied that it's 1. And we have pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. We have 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. And we have 2.8889 plus 2 pi n and n from the set of integers. And note. It's customary to put in increasing order. Let's look at the next example. We have 2 sine x cos x plus sine x, and we need to solve this in radians. Because we don't have a higher degree, it's not necessary to use variables to substitute. What we do need to do is we need to factor. So we have sine x times 2 cos x plus 1 equals 0. So this gives us sine x equals 0. Here we simply have x equals 0. We'll call this x1. We have another solution. We'll call it x3. And this is pi. The angle is pi, so we have this solution. Now we have 2 cos x2 equals negative 1. So cos x2 equals negative 1 half. We'll note that this is a special ratio. So theta prime equals pi over 3, and x2 equals pi minus the reference angle, which is pi over 3. So x2 equals 2 pi over 3. So we have x1, x2, x3. We need x4. And the reason why is we have all students take calculus, and we have cosine negative in quadrants 2 and quadrant 3. So we have an answer in quadrant 3, and the formula is theta is equal to pi plus theta prime. So we have x4 equal to pi plus pi over 3, which is 4 pi over 3. Now x1 and x3 work out to one general solution because we're offset by pi and offset by pi again. So our solution is pi n. We have 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. And we have 4 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. And n from the set of integers. So we have a 0 plus pi n. But we don't need to add 0 plus because that's implied. Next problem. 2 tan x squared equals 3 tan x minus 1. This is where you'll want to use substitution. We'll let y equal to tan x. So we have 2y squared equals 3y minus 1. Don't try to do too many steps at once. Now we move everything to y one side. We have 2y squared minus 3y plus 1 equals 0. Now we factor this, 2y minus 1, and y minus 1 equals 0. Now we can substitute back in. 
we have 2 tan x equals 1. And we also have tan x equals 1. We'll call this one x1, we'll call this one x2. Now we solve for this. Tan x1 equals 1 half. x1 equals inverse tan of a half. Here we have x2 equals inverse tan of 1, which is just pi over 4. Again, we have a special ratio. We have x1, x2, and for tangent, it's symmetrical, and the period is only pi anyways, so we don't really have answers in another quadrant. Now we can do the approximation of x1, and that's 0.4636. And if you want to do the approximation for x3, x3 would be approximately equal to pi plus 0.4636, and that's approximately 3.6052. And here you would have to add pi, so x4 equals 5 pi over 4. But again, the period's just pi. So we have x1, 0.4636 plus pi n, and we have pi over 4 plus pi n, n from the set of integers. So in general, tangent will only have one general solution with, with a period being pi over b. Sine and cosine have many different solutions. If sine bx equals plus or minus one or cos bx equals plus or minus one, then there's only one general solution with the period being two pi over b. And you would notice this as being a maximum or a minimum value. So sine and cosine only hit the maximum or minimum once per period. Here we have sine bx equals zero or cos bx equals zero. There's only one general solution, but the period is pi over b because we see two solutions before it repeats again. Here we have a max, here we have a min. And finally, if sine bx or cos bx doesn't equal either of those, then there's two general solutions with the period being two pi over b. And again, we can look at these on the unit circle. For sine, we see it equal to zero here and here, the maximum and minimum. And for cosine, we see zeros here and here, and we see the maximum and the minimum. Remember, cosine is related to x, sine is related to y. And that completes this lesson.